Sí. Reporting in progress. Big group. Hi, everybody. Welcome as you join us. Welcome to the Madison Art Society oil demo with Paul Batch this morning. We're going to let people trickle in from the waiting room. And we will not delay too long in starting. I'll just say a few words about the Madison Art Society in a little bit, and then we'll get going. Give Paul another minute or two to get himself ready to roll, and then we'll see what he's got to tell us about painting a beautiful oil painting. So I guess I'll take this um, time right now to welcome everybody. As people continue to come in, um, I just want to say thank you for sharing your morning with us. You are with the Madison Art Society, Paul Batch oil painting demo. Um, Paul will paint for about an hour and a half, hour, hour and a half. And um, I'm sure we'll all learn a bit as we're entertained by Paul. So let me tell you a little bit about the Madison Art Society. To get any information that you'd like about us, be sure to go to our website, madisonartsocietyct.org, and you can find out all kinds of information. You can become a member there. You can pay online. You'll see um, our member artist galleries, which if you do join and you are an artist, you can have your gallery up, um, up on our website, linked to our website couple of activities coming up tomorrow. If you're in the Shoreline area or in Madison, stop by the um, Bauer Park Harvest Festival that goes on. It's an annual event every year. We'll have five to 10, 15 artists there. If you'd like to join us, please do so. And we will be painting plein air. So if you would like to join, please just shoot me an email or go onto the website. And you can be part of that tomorrow. And if you happen to have paintings of Bower Park, then you can sell that tomorrow possibly. If some people that are at the event love your work and maybe they'll buy it wet right off your easel. Uh, let's see. The next really big event we have is our elected member and holiday show. That will be at the Scranton Library, which is beautifully newly renovated. If you haven't seen that, then be sure to come out to our show. Um, that will be November through January, about a six week show. So that's, that's it for now. Let me read you, let me tell you a little bit about Paul. Paul Batch is the person here that will be painting for us today. If you're just coming in, welcome. And we will get underway. I'm gonna tell you about Paul and then he will begin his demo. Paul Batch is a nationally represented contemporary painter, best known for his atmospheric landscapes. Paul is a signature member of Oil Painters of America, as well as an award-winning member of the Portrait Society of, Society of America. His work has appeared in numerous publications, including Artist Magazine, Plein Air Magazine, American Art Collector, and recently in Fine Art Connoisseurs, Three to watch, January, February of 2021. Paul received both his BFA and MFA from the Hartford Art School at the University of Hartford in Connecticut. In addition to being a full-time artist, Paul has been teaching art for over 10 years and is looking forward to sharing his tips and techniques with you and all of us this morning. So Paul, we'll let you get started. We're very happy to have you. Is there anything- Thank you so like much, Hillary. Say? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. I was just going to be awkwardly loud. I was waiting when next to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
All right, so we're going to be painting a landscape today. Um, I believe everybody had access or should have had access to the reference photo I'm going to be using today. Yes, we did. We did get that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I tend to, I, I like to use photos as a reference or uh, sketches or whatever, but I do a lot of photos and stuff because it's more comfy to be inside than outside for me. But um, I tend to use them as a starting point. So this is like sort of my, um, my disclosure, like not my disclosure, but when my painting doesn't look like the reference at the end, I'm justifying it right now by saying, I abandoned the reference like about midway through my painting and I sort of make things up and things like that. So it's like, I use it as a starting point. And then from there, I just sort of go with my gut or whatever. It go with my gut or like the 20 something years I've been painting. <laughs> Um, before we get started oh and if at any time all right sorry i'm messing things up if at any time during this you have a question please populate it in the chat and someone will speak it out loud so that that way we can have a conversation maybe during this you don't have to wait till the end um i'm going to get real boring real quick while i'm painting so if there's questions and we can have a little back and forth that'd be nice um but don't feel pressure to <laughs> thank you for mentioning also, that paul Excuse me one yeah. sec, and I can read things out from the chat for you. So it'll be great. Everybody will remain muted. And then if they, if I see a chat, then a question there, I'll read that out. And maybe, you know, at the end, we'll probably have a question and more of an official question period where we can unmute people. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Hillary. Sure. So I've been doing, I, I'm going to, get my plug out of the way now before I, I don't want to do it at the end in case people bugger off. So I'm going to hit you with my uh, sales pitch right now. I've been doing these uh, Zoom demos out of my home for what, since COVID started pretty much like about a month or two after that. And um, we do, we host one every month. There's a little lesson involved and uh, we do one of these. If you sign up and Tammy's going to populate the link. Yes. My wife's off on the side here, Tammy. Um, what is it? Just like you have up until an hour after we're done here i'm going to open the window we'll take five dollars off makes it for like what fifteen dollar lesson yeah so about for a fifteen dollar lesson so if you follow the link it'll give you access to sunday's live event you also get a recording of it um you might want to hold off and see how i do during this before you go and spend it i don't mean to say it like that but right nobody wants to you know this might be bad <laughs> so uh, but that link's going to get pop populated in the chat so there's my plug. We're going to be doing a little autumn and stuff on Sunday, and we'll talk about the colors of fall and things like that, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, that's stuff aside. Let's get to painting. Mm -hmm. That's um, important stuff. That's important to tell us I that. know it's important stuff, but it's just more fun to paint than talk about trying to get money from people. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a reference photo. I'm painting on... Um, I'll go over my materials first and then we'll start moving some paint around. I have a uh, brand new Yugo Pashad box that I got for my birthday. So it's a few months old. My wife picked it out for me. That's why I'm staring at her while I'm talking about it. <laughs> and it's awesome. I had never heard of the company before. I wasn't sure. I thought like, oh no, I got some, uh, somebody gave me an art gift and I don't really know, you know, I think we've all gotten pretty bad art gifts in our lifetime, right? You, you can only get that that beginner set so many times before you just want to throw it out as soon as you get it. But um, mm -hmm. this Yugo Pashad box is fantastic. Um, I highly recommend it. Nobody pays me to say that, but that's what I'm painting on. Uh, that's what it is. My medium, if you can see it down here, is a, on the bottom left is Gamblin's Neo Miguel. If you've never tried it before, it's like liquid, but thicker. So it's an alkyd based resin. It dries fast, but this is goopier, and um, I like the goopiness of it. That's about it. Paul, excuse well, me. Can you repeat the sure. name of that? Gamblin's Neo Miguel. Okay, thanks. There it is. Okay. Left to right, we're going to go over my colors. Um, you also should have gotten a color list. It's also in the chat. It's also in the chat. If I'm out of order, you can let me know, but it's, it's close enough. Uh, everything's pretty much Michael Harding. Otherwise, I'll say otherwise. So all these paints are Michael Harding. And if I say it's not, then it's a different kit. 
we're going to start on the left here with uh, Bright Yellow Lake Deep, followed by Bright Yellow Lake. What that does is it gives me a warm yellow and a cool yellow. I have titanium white number three. Number three has dryers added to it. You may or may not like that. I like it because it speeds up the whole process. It does dry pretty quick. Um, I was using their regular titanium white and it's beautiful, but it takes forever to dry. And I just need things to move quicker than that. So I use the titanium white number three, it has some cobalt dryers added to it. Over here is a Williamsburg color. I'm gonna not say it right, but it's Juan Brilliant maybe like Joan Brilliant or something like that. It's kind of like a Naples yellow, but brighter and whiter. Over here, we're back to Michael Harding colors and it's uh, French yellow ochre, transparent yellow oxide, transparent red oxide. I love the transparent oxides. I use them a lot and you'll see that. Over here is an old Holland color. This is cadmium yellow orange. It's not cadmium orange, it's cadmium yellow orange. There's a difference. This one glows more, it's less orange. Um, I'd love to use this in glazing and stuff like that. So it's a nice color. This is um, back to Michael Harding, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson. This is a gambling cheater color. I call it a cheater color because it's a premix, but it's a Portland warm gray, which is just a nice, gray base to work off of and i use this a lot um starting off those sunset clouds and things like that i will go to this first before i go to white i'll just take this and adjust it king's blue light ultramarine blue cobalt blue mars black grum rocker this is a grum rocker um phthalo green yellow shade there's like a blue shade or a green shade or something i don't get that i get the yellow shade and it's Grumbacher. Because Grumbacher is not as good as the other companies, this Thalo Green isn't as strong as some of the other ones. Thalo Green's a pretty nasty color. And if you've ever like accidentally got it into some other colors on your palette or stuff, you could get very angry at your palette very quick. It's one of those colors that can sort of just get everywhere and ruin the day. So I get the Grumbacher one. It's got a little bit less of a pigment load in it, mixes a little easier with the other colors. It's more manageable. Um, Yay, Grumbacher for not being awesome. <laughs> this is a horrible advertisement. <laughs> They'll never give me anything. Uh, we won't anyways, tell them. Every, yeah, don't tell them, right? Nobody's watching. Uh, over here, it's uh, I have two gambling colors. I don't know if this is on the list or not. This is Radiant Violet and uh, Radiant Magenta. These are just fun, pre-mixed, happy colors. They're just nice I have over there. I. Uh, huh, as I started off painting, my paintings were really dark and depressing and um i've been trying over the years to get happier um it sounds like a, a mental issue but it very well could be but um these sort of colors like this sort of help me uh elevate the key of my palette a little bit easier without uh too much effort because like i said they're pre-mixed and they're really fun colors can you mix them yourselves yes i believe so i believe one's just like a if you look at the tube, it's like a magenta already pre-mixed with a zinc oxide or something like that. But um, fun colors to have. I love the radiant line from Gamblin. Worth a shot too, if you want to get into the happy area. That's it. Brushes, I pretty much use um, Signet Egberts. This is a Robert Simmons Signet Egbert. Egberts are like filberts, but they're longer. Because they're longer, they're a little harder to control. Um, new out of the box, they can give you a line, but it's not going to hold up long. Unless you get on larger works, then that width is fine. Something smaller like we're doing today. Um, I'm not going to be able to get much of a line with this. But what I like about them is the way they wear. And that makes it, um, it's how I sort of carve my pine trees out and do my grasses and stuff. And the lack of uh, being able to get that fine line, right? So these things just keep me loose. The longer, floppier, and they, they, they fray. So we've got those. If we need a sharper line, I have a couple of treckle brushes, long flats, one, uh, one small round. That's about it. And if I pull anything else out of the box, I'll let you know. 
I use a palette knife. Um, about my Yugo box, it comes with a white palette surface. I did swap that out for a gray one. I usually paint on the, uh, the gray paper, the palette paper stuff. I like having a colored surface to work from, even though I work from a white palette uh, canvas. P panel, panel. This panel is an ampersand gesso board. It's 11 by 14. This is what we'll be using today. I was using gesso board almost exclusively, exclusively, but um, less so now. I've been going back and forth with linen and canvas and the panels and stuff. It's just how we do, right? Sometimes we just go one way and then things take us another way. But that's it. That was a mouthful. Okay, before we get started, I'm gonna mix up some colors ahead of time, okay? I like to mix up a few colors before I get going. So that way I'm not constantly stopping during the act of painting. Um, so I'll pre-mix my dark with the transparent red oxide, phthalo green. And I'll often change this with something else too. Like um, you can add some black to it, you can add some blue, depending on how dark you wanna get. I don't think we're gonna get that dark today. I don't really know. What's nice about the phthalo green red oxide uh, mixture, and I'm not the only, I didn't come up with this. Um, just having a red and a green is nice because you put them together, they neutralize, you get a dark, okay? Now, if you want it to air on the side of green, you just add more green, but you can also turn it to the side of uh, red pretty quickly too. So if you want a warmer painting. So like today there's like that sun in the photo that I'm looking at, right? So we'll wanna be a little warmer and a little less green. If we're like summer, spring, I'm gonna have more of a green base to work off of. So the colors that, um, I wanna think about the colors that I'm mixing into this muddy mixture. So we'll have a dark, in order for our light to really emanate from the panel, we're gonna to wanna to have um, the sky sort of subdued and sitting in the background, like a good background should. Um, we're gonna use the warm gray for that. We'll start off with that. This is a little brighter in value out of the tube than I'm gonna to wanna to use on my panel initially. So I'm gonna grab some of the ultramarine, maybe a little bit of cobalt, cause that's nice, right? Some alizarin. And Let's try the yellow oxide into that too, just to kind of mute it. I don't want it to be too purple. Now our light coming through the trees there in the photo, that's gonna be like an orangey yellow fireball. That's the goal. So in order for that to pop more, we're gonna to wanna to surround it with sort of a purpley hue. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't wanna like be Crayola purple yet, but. I'm gonna just make this pile bigger. It looks too small. More gray, more cobalt, more ultramarine, a little more of the yellow oxide, a little bit of the alizarin. Same colors we put in there previously. Now I know it's not incredibly exciting to watch somebody mix paint, but um, this just saves me from having to take breaks as we go. I have a box of rags down here. So when you see, I just, this thing is endless. It's like a joke, right? I can just keep pulling this thing.
Okay. I'm going to put some turp on my Egbert. I'm going to like wipe off the excess a little bit. We're going to tone the panel, stain the panel, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to do it while it's wet though. So I got transparent yellow oxide, turp on my brush. And we're just going to cover this thing very lightly. Now what I'm doing is just applying the color. I want to take off the excess. So we're going to wipe a little bit. It's going to get a little awkward in front of the camera maybe, but I want to wipe that off, excess off because I do want my colors to mix in with this color, but I don't want it to take over the whole thing. What I should be left with is sort of just like a nice kind of glowing panel. And if you've seen my paintings before, um, one, thanks for looking and caring. Two, um, you'll see the, this color coming through a lot of times at the end. Sometimes I end up covering it all, other times I end up using it. Um, and we'll talk about that more as we get towards the end of it, probably. Yes, you can do this ahead of time and work on it while it's dry. I do that sometimes, but a lot of times I just do it like this. Because we've wiped away so much of the excess, you're gonna find that it's not really gonna give you a hard time mixing in with everything. There's a helicopter over my house. I've done nothing wrong, but in case you hear that, that's what it is. <laughs> is that what it is? It's, it's, it never does this stuff. Anyway, so now I'm gonna switch over. I'm done with the turp, except to clean my brushes. Um, I'm dipped my brush in that Neo Miguel, my medium. We're coming into the dark over here. We're gonna draw out our composition. Um, should we go high? I don't know. That's what the photo does, right? So my concern at this point is just like trying not to do something too boring right in the middle. We're gonna go for like an upper third sort of thing here. I'm not gonna get all the trees, right? I'm not that guy. We're just interpreting the photo that we have in front of us, using it as a guide. But um, what's nice about working from a photo is that you can pick areas where there's not a lot of, uh, you can pick areas where that there's bends, right? So like not everything's up and down in terms of my trees. So while I'm looking at the photo, I'm looking for trees that are a little more irregular so that my trees aren't all stiff and like coming out like dot, 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 right? Because that's gonna kill um, any sense of movement really quick and we don't want that. We want things to be loose. We want things uh, non-committal, free, organic, right? We're trying to mimic nature and nature's uh, Nature is a mess. It's not a mess. It's beautiful. 
but it's not well organized, right? When we make our, uh, I don't, I'm not accusing anybody here of doing this, but when we make our lollipop trees or meatball uh, clouds and things like that, right? That's our fault because that's our brain just sort of compartmentalizing things and going on uh, learned images. It's like they did this on purpose. <laughs> That's not about you guys. It's about this stuff going on outside. <laughs> Gotta love the Zoom. Okay. Okay, I'm good. I, over here for now, I've got a little uh, thicket of trees that I'm happy with. We'll build off of that. Um, again, I want to make sure that I'm not too close to that middle line. Right, heaven forbid we hit that thing. Everybody will freak out. But what it does do is it uh, kills the form pretty quick, right? I mean, it, it like blocks the uh, concept of depth. If we split the canvas right in half, it looks too mechanical. So I want some sort of lead in over here. Um, we can be really direct and we can add a little water feature. Um, I'm gonna start off with just some lines and we'll see where that sort of goes it could just be implied lines you know um sometimes you can make grass look like it's going a certain way i can't believe this went to three I just dipped my brush in the turp and I'm just gonna move this stuff around a little quicker. Cause we are still in the drawing sort of part. Rag, wiping, just developing a tone. This is going to be darker than this. So we might as well establish that right now. Now I've got it really red down in there, right? Even though I've got red and green, this is really leaning towards the red side. So we got a nice, really warm base to work from. Paul, I have a quick question. Yeah, what's up? Hi, it's Hillary. Um, the grass, I have a black and white photo. What color, is the grass more like hay color or, or is yeah. it bright green? It's a mix. It's like hay and green. Okay. Now that I've got that set up, I'm gonna to come to my pile of gray over here. I'm gonna see what that looks like. That's what it looks like. It's okay. If it's okay, we can put it all over the place. I'm gonna start at the top. I'm probably gonna adjust it as I work my way down. We'll get a little warmer and maybe a little brighter as we, uh, you know, so our area of interest is going to be over here. That's where we're going to put our sun. So we just want to work towards that. I'm not covering up everything. Um, just a little bit of medium on my brush. Not a ton of paint on my brush. I don't want any um, stuff that's going to be difficult for me to work with at this point. So if I keep things thin and loose, it allows me to uh, have a little more freedom as I move forward. And it allows it to be easier as I move forward. If you start off with that heavy impasto, sometimes it can be, um, it can sort of dictate how you move forward and I don't want that. Now I just painted over the trees I drew, but I can still kind of see them, 
and that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, oftentimes I get, why don't you paint the background first? I don't paint the background first. Um, I like to sort of get a feel for the composition and I, I get happy with how it's going to look. I can kind of see how the end's going to be. And um, I like to get that drawing uh, component kind of understood initially so that I can just sort of color. So that's all it really is, right? We're just kind of coloring. So I will go back and forth with my trees. I'll put them in, I'll take them out, they'll get ruined. But it also helps with them feeling integrated in the surface too. Um, you know, if you have that like background finish tree on top, sometimes it's hard to not make it feel like it's sticking out and ending up with a bunch of hard edges and awkwardness. So this is one way I combat that. And I've moved over to a flat brush now. Back to my Egbert, still in the dark pile. I want to sort of hint at distant trees without making this too linear. I'm going to use the side of the brush here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. And I'm going to sort of just like smush it up and play around with the side, move it up, twist it. I just want it to feel like organic growth out there. Too much paint on the brush, it's fine. You can wipe off some of the excess and sort of draw back into it. Gesso board is very slick. It's very easy to take the paint off of the panel. Um, that will frustrate some people. I'm just sort of used to working that way. So I use it as sort of a reductive method. If you've ever drawn a figure in charcoal, you know, sometimes we lay it over with a, a dark, you can cover the paper with charcoal and then come in with an eraser and draw out your lights. You know, it's also uh, nice to do here. You can take a clean brush to wipe out. You can take the rag and sort of shape it the way you want. Come back in and draw trees if you want through the dark. That's also fine, you know. And you can cover back up. I think we live next to a train. This is insane. Chat, any questions for um, Paul using the chat feature? Just put in a little more dark in here to sort of darken that up. This is probably going to be my darkest part of the painting is up here. This will still remain in the middle. I'm gonna break these harder lines up. I'm scratching over it with the side of the brush again. And we're just hinting at, you know, just has branches sort of dissipate into the sky, right? Just want it to feel organic. So mess up those hard lines. I mean, we could do a water thing. Right through there, that's probably not too bad. Why don't we do that?
Okay, so now I'm trying to feel out the possibility of doing a water feature down below. Um, I think it would be kind of nice to have some of the reflections from the tree in here. Because it is sort of a large space. I don't know. Like I said, I like to have somewhat of a plan, but not too concrete. And if we change it all up in 10 minutes, so be it. At least it's quiet now. Again, just sort of feeling out the possibility of that water feature down there. Yes, I always paint wet on the wet. Yes, and even after um, my panels dry, often I'll glaze a color over it where I'm going to go back in and work or over the whole thing again. Um, I, like, I like to wet, work on a wet surface. Sometimes on a dry surface, right? You can't say like all the time because sometimes we just want <clears throat> to dry brush and scumble a little area or something like that, and that's fine. But for the most part, I'm working on a wet panel. Now, our sun's going to come over here. <clears throat> so I want to build sort of a warm home for this thing. The whole point is to have either white or as close as we want to as can get to it with white here. And I wanna surround it with the color I want you to think it is, which is gonna be like the yellow orangey thing. So we're gonna start building like a warm home for this highlight. Now I'm gonna do that with um, the cat orange, the cat red. No, it's not cat red, bright red. What is it? It's cat red. Cat orange, cat red. <clears throat> Where are we sticking? We're sticking it here. So I'll just start putting that red right in there. We can add some of the yellow deep to it. And then we can sort of bring that out into our painting a little bit. As we get closer to the sky, I'm gonna transfer over to this Juan Brilliant. We'll mix that in there too. And it's gonna transition a little nicer into the sky because this is a very saturated initial move I did with the cadmium orange and the cadmium red, that's very saturated color. Now, in order to sort of calm it down, but bring it up in terms of value, adding the uh, Juan Brilliant to it is makes it go into that purple nicer. So it feels more like a, pinky peachy sort of thing and a little less like Crayola intense. Again, it's all about sort of building up to that intensity. It's about building up to those heavier applications of paint. I'm, uh, I sound like I'm afraid of a commitment and I kind of am. So the thinner we keep things, the looser, all that stuff, it's fine. I wasn't afraid to commit to my wife though, that's different. It's okay if you crack the smile at that one.
Now, just so we know, <clears throat> I'm going to put my brightest part right in there. I might as well lower the tree. So just doing that with the rag, just wiping it out a little bit. Um, I want to make sure that I have my brightest bright established fairly soon. I'll put the highlight in shortly and then uh, we still have our darkest dark is probably going to be, you know, along this tree line here. We are going to have the dark back lit sky back back lit sky against this highlight. Okay, so I am going to go with the water feature below. I'm gonna spend a little time drawing this up so that you can understand it. I don't even know if it makes sense to anybody right now. So I'm gonna start with reflections from the trees. I'm gonna take this tree shape. I'm gonna follow it down. I'm gonna hit the water about here and I'm gonna mimic its air movement, right? So it's going like this. I don't wanna come down here and go the other way. That would make no sense. We're gonna follow it. We're gonna mirror it. This thing's going this way. We'll meet the water around here and we'll just... It doesn't have to be perfect. I say that because I can't do it perfect. So I'm giving you permission to not be perfect as well. <laughs> but we do want to hit some of the major points. Oh, it's different. I do like this brush. I don't have another one. But it was getting a little floppy for a uh, tree line. So I just wanted something sharper. So I'm just getting a clean brush. Still flat. This is what you signed up for this morning, watching this guy paint the same tree lines over and over again. Sorry. Now, when I'm drawing trees out, what I'm doing is I'm, my brush is pretty wet. I've got a good amount of paint on it. I'm gonna hit it down here in the dark and I'm gonna drag it up and try to like sort of lift off the canvas as I go. So hopefully it's got a bit of a heavier base, right? And then it gets nice and thin as it gets rises up through the sky. So even if you're coming off of a tree trunk, right? So I have a main branch here. I'm gonna to come to that main branch. I'm gonna put my brush down. I'm gonna start dragging it up or pulling it up and we're gonna twist it and roll it and lift it right off the panel. Less paint, smaller branch, same concept. Tap it and then sort of put it down, push it up and lift it off the panel. You wanna think like they're just, you know, they bring them up and they just whisk off into the sky. Oh, and they have to go different ways, right? Like I'm a righty. So like every time I do it, I push it down here and I pull that way. Like that's just what I do all the time. And um, I got to make sure I pull things to the left. That feels, uh, feels awkward for me to do that. I don't know about you guys or to even have them like bend down, right? Sometimes they have to go, you know, not everything's going up and rising in the same direction. Again, if you find yourself getting too uh, generic with your, trees like look at a photo go outside stare at a tree try to draw the tree that, that that's the best way to do it drawing a tree is uh 
pretty time consuming. It takes it takes some patience, but I think the uh, payoff is worth it. Now I haven't mixed any other colors for my trees. We're still working off the initial uh, dark there. Yeah, that kind of mimics the other one, sucker. Just get rid of that with a little purple. When painting water, what happens upstairs also happens downstairs. Rule of thumb, I think, is that it goes a little darker when it's down in here. Not always the case, obviously. But we're going to just start off with that concept. So I'm taking my initial gray that we had in the sky, adding some blue, a little bit of red oxide to it. That was too much red oxide. I just want to gray it down. We can even put the uh, yellow oxide into it. Not looking for a bright, beautiful color just a little base that I can build off of. Now I need to reestablish my highlight from my brightest point. I've got a clean brush. We're going into the white. This is the first time we're touching white today, I think. So, and that's pretty deliberate because I'm just trying to build up sort of this mid-tone base on which uh, we want the highlight to jump off of. So I've got pure white. I'm gonna add a little bit of the bright yellow to it just so we're not quite at pure white yet. Uh, I'm actually going to add a little bit of the yellow deep to it too, because I don't want to have the uh, initial cool yellow in there just yet. I want to build up this sort of warm area a little bit more. Um, we're going to go slow. That's a little whiter than I want right now. So I'm going back to the cat orange, cat red, more yellow deep. And I want uh, more of a saturated color right now so put that in there i'm going to paint around the tree a little bit i know it's annoying but don't be afraid to go out over the tree by accident or on purpose it's fine you don't want to outline the tree too much because then we just might as well have just uh because it's going to look like a cartoon right if we outline the tree we don't want to do that now, when the light meets the uh, back row of trees, I'm gonna pour a, a lot of red there. As if the sun's sort of coming up behind there and it sort of makes things on fire. I don't want a lot of white on my brush. I've got too much on it. So I'm gonna wipe some of that off so I just have a deeper pigment sort of color. More saturated thing, not a deeper pigment, whatever. I 
don't be afraid to paint that red around. Right, because it's not often that light. It's just like in a highlight and in a circle and it stays there, right? It usually radiates, it affects the things around it. So we want that concept to happen. Now that this is all very warm, I've got the red, I've got the orange, yellow, I've got as much fire <clears throat> color as I can put in here. Now I'm gonna switch over to the cooler yellow with the white. And this is where we're gonna start doing the highlight. So I have sort of a warm base, like I said, and we're gonna come in with the cooler color. Warms and cools, they get a little vibration thing going. I think the impressionist taught us that. My teacher did, Stephen Brown. So that's how I know, and he's right. <laughs> So we can put that down in there. That works good. It's funny, it's like 20 years later, I still mention my teacher. It's nice. Now that should look bright. If it doesn't look um, awesome right now, it's your screen, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna start building up the grasses a little bit. Um, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to grasses. So I like to just sort of go in ochre. I've already got this mixture set up. It's very red. I'm gonna kick it towards the green a little bit now. So I've got ochre on my brush, more of the green, and I'm going to um, rub it around into this dark mix I got. This is almost kind of, that's too strong. I don't like that. So I'm gonna leave that a pile. And I'm going to come right into the ochre and the yellow oxide. I didn't clean my brush in between, but this green was just a little too heavy, a little too dark, not really what I wanted it to be. I want it to be more of a ochre gold sort of green. Ochre gold green. What is that? Like khaki? I don't know. <laughs> Side of the brush, good amount of paint on my brush. And um, we're just going to scumble it around a little bit just to build up the uh, painted surface of it. You can take pretty much just straight ochre, throw it on there. I'm still allowing some of the red to come through at this point. You can still see some of the bare panel behind it. Well, the, the toned panel. Um, I wanna be careful how linear I am with that line. So I can come back down and sort of break up the straightness of this horizon line a little bit. With my initial dark. This is very drab looking. Well, uh, well, I drabbed it, right? I drabbed it. I, I dulled it down because I didn't want it too bright too quick. I'm looking at it, it needs to be brighter. Let's make it brighter. I'm just going back to the initial color we laid up on top. That already pre is brighter when I put it down on there a little bit. So we'll just build it up that way. Back to my Egbert brush, dab, dab, tap, whatever. You can drag the brush across. You can go up and down. Just having a nice variety in our brush works always nice. Come up here a little bit. I'll probably just leave that. That looks kind of cool. What I said looked kind of cool was just sort of this bare area of uh, panel coming through. I'm actually gonna expand on that and just wipe some more areas out. 
so that the grass isn't all the same value. Um, Hillary asked if it was uh, all green or if it was ochre initially and stuff. And in the photo, it's got a little bit of both. And I, I want to push that concept. Can also take the rag and um, no particular point here, right? Just sort of a whatever, whatever you call this, that's where I'm at. And we can wipe away a little bit. This also gets some cool grass stuff. It also ruins the water that we put on there and makes it all messy. Why do we want to do that? That's fine, it just opens things up. It keeps us from having lines we don't want. Again, with the cohesiveness. Now I've got gray in my grass and I'm okay with that. There's also yellow coming through and green and stuff. So I think that that's fine. I got to figure out what to do with this area up in the front. Too much gray on my brush. I got to wipe that off. Back to my green, yellow oxide. The yellow oxide is going to warm the green more so than the ochre, because I was just like, I don't know if I should go ochre or yellow oxide. I went yellow oxide because it's not going to adjust the value that much, but it's going to change the temperature. The initial green I put down was cooler than I wanted. I want to keep going with this warm stuff. Little Naples, that's not Naples yellow. It's one brilliant. That's also where I put the Naples yellow though. <laughs> Again, when I'm putting the paint on, paint's staying on the canvas, but I'm also picking some of the paint off too. It's also coming up because the surface of the gesso board is so slick. I'm not saying is it a bad thing because I can come back in and like swipe that out and it leaves little flecks of light coming through from that initial underpainting. Now, of course, I'm going to drag this thing, this, uh, this highlight. We're going to reflect that into the water so we can wipe that out right now. Um, this kind of feels automatic. Should I add snow? <laughs> sorry that was a personal joke between me and my wife she came downstairs last night and i was painting autumn with some snow tracks and uh she said it doesn't snow in the fall hmm. except that one time when we lost the power for like what two weeks or something way back i said i don't know i just thought it looked cool <laughs> I'll take some of the initial color that we had up in here, my yellow red mixture with the white. And um oh, this is a sword. Hello sword. This is a rosemary evergreen sword. They're shaped like a Egbert that's been chopped. And then you get sort of a sword edge. These are kind of fun brushes too. Now I'm going to go in sort of a horizontal motion and we're going to do like our, this is the way the water goes kind of stuff. Tap, tap, tap. I'm not really doing hard lines. We'll see. Uh, 
The Happy Gilmore thing. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Cleaned off my brush a bit, went to the white. We're gonna get that uh, yellow deep on it with the white. So we can bring this up a little bit. Not bright enough, more white, more yellow deep, more paint. Cleaning off my brush, I got to work on the transition from this highlight into the grass over here. We will lighten this area of the grass just a little bit with some of the ochre. That darkened it. Way to go, Teach. Yellow ochre, one brilliant. Pop it in there. Maybe warm it up with a little bit of the color, meaning orange and red. There we go. I'm going to put some additional orange in the grasses because as I'm doing it, I kind of like what it's doing. And it makes sense some of the grasses would be orange if we had this fireball in the back, right? Right. I want to come back and sort of uh, work on my reflections in the water a little bit because we've sort of abandoned them. I don't want to go too black yet. So I've got brown, I mean, red oxide, ultramarine blue, and I'm sort of mixing it in with this cloud color that we initially had. It's a little too brown here. I'm going to add more blue. I don't necessarily really want it to read brown. I'm shooting for sort of a darker gray. This is probably too bright. It's not too bad, but yeah. So we'll add more blue to deepen it. I'm going back to my sword. I've got the lighter blue from the sky. I'm going to come over some of my uh, tree reflections and we'll just sort of work them into the water. I'm doing a little dab, dab, dab with the side of the brush. You can still see the trees through the dab, dab, dabs, but we're just uh, breaking up those strong lines a little bit. Ah, there, now I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so the... Okay, at this point, I've got my round brush now in my hand. I apologize if the screen's moving a little bit. I just tapped my phone. It'll settle in in a sec.
So now we're going to do more with the branches. I've got gray on my brush. It's not really black. It's the same sort of color we were using down here in the reflections. And I'm going to expand on our trees. So I'm coming to the larger branches that are already established. As we did previously, we sort of plop the brush down a little bit and then we're going to twist and roll off the top. Using the sword, which is sort of like the Egbert side of the brush, I can come in and um, we can add some more, uh, just sort of like hint at those little, uh, the little branches, right? When the little branches are grouped together, unless you're doing the, you know, super duper realistic thing, I just want to sort of suggest at that. And so I like to use the side of the brush, just sort of smush it around with a little bit of a darker value and we'll uh hint at that concept sometimes you go too far one way you got to go back over it with the initial sky color you can use it as an eraser apply it the same way and that way we get this sort of overlapping and building of the dark and the light and the tree and the sky and um hopefully things start to feel unified as we uh move forward Come back to our water uh, reflection highlight. We'll make it a little stronger right there. Wipe the bright yellow. You can just get a nice dollop of white right in there. That's fine. What I want to have more of also is the uh, this these light squiggles. I don't know what the term is. Like we have some terms for things like sky holes. I don't know who made that up, but right, that's a thing we all deal with sky holes or tree holes. But most people just call them sky holes. Here in Massachusetts, we have a different kind of hole, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> What time is it? Tammy. It's after 11. Oh, so we're doing good? Yeah, it's 11.09. Thank you, Hillary. No, Oops. sure. Chat, any questions you have for Paul? Right. While we've got him. Yes, talking to you. The drunken master version. <laughs> no questions? I explained it that well. Yeah. Awesome. There we go. <laughs> I think I saw something pop up. I think that's a sign of a good teacher that the class is not left stumped. Or well, they checked out and they're watching the prices right. I don't know. It's one or the other. You might give Marianne a link to the special page, give them a day to sign up. Oh, yeah. I thought we already did that. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's in the chat. It's in the chat. You want to give it to Marianne? Yeah, she can send it out to everybody if they want to sign up. We'll yeah, that's fine. Give them a day. Yeah. We'll put it in the chat. Can you repeat? We can't really hear the background. Let me tell them, Paul. What the heck did you say? Why don't you come say it? 
I don't know what you said. She asked if, what? We could give Marianne the link. To sign up. Please. To sign up for the demo at a discount. And then Marianne can share it with the membership for the sure. day. Yes, we'll let's do that. We'll take it off. At can you stop that part? <laughs> we could do that. That'd be great. Oh, okay. Is this, did you already talk about your demo that you do on? Yeah, I month? did it in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Tammy's, Tammy's good though. And she wants me to push it a little harder. That's okay. All. Yeah, do. <laughs> how, about, now? how about telling everyone that you're going to be at uh, Susan Powell? Mm -hmm. Yes. November 5th. If you want to come by and say hi in real life, which we can do now a little bit, right? Um, November 5th. In the evening, I think around six, Susan Powell is having an opening for, I believe it's the winter show. Is it the winter show already? Yeah, it's a group show though. But yeah, I'll be down there for that opening. Um, I have a few pieces there. I've also got a, uh, I'm working on a, um, I'm supposed to be working on um, an article for International Artist Magazine. I'm doing a step-by-step uh, -step process, how to paint this kind of way with them so that's coming up um a fantastic painter by the name of todd casey he's a wonderful still life painter he does a lot of uh gin and tonic paintings and things like that i don't mean to dumb it down like that but um he does some great stuff he's got a book on colors his second sort of book and he's using some of my work in that too and we can send you a link to that you can pre-order it on amazon i get no money for that i'm just pushing it Hmm. but uh yeah no so yeah lots of lots of good things going on paul do you do still lifes no nah. okay short answer <laughs> <laughs> no and um <clears throat> i still do the portraits occasionally but uh not so much i um it may not sound incredibly romantic but i i transferred over to landscape painting as a career decision hmm. it's just the whole concept of that is kind of laughable too like yeah i'm going to be a landscape painter but um it's just it was easier to market and mm -hmm. sell portraits mm -hmm. are really um another level and i didn't want to pursue it on that level i still love portraits and stuff but um <sighs> painting people for money is uh it's different like with the landscapes i i kind of i kind of paint whatever i want but i mean i'm i'm i've got my own sort of look or shtick or whatever you want to call it you know um with port i can do things and change things and it doesn't really matter i have a lot of freedom with the landscape with a portrait it really has to look like their daughter or better than their daughter looks or something right like <laughs> you have to the nose has to you know like there's lots of issues that can come up and um, I, I found the whole process to be a bit much. So I like to do portraits at home on the side for me when I've got time, but that's it. Mm -hmm. I have the utmost respect for figurative and painters and stuff like that though. That, that's, a, that's a good skill set. I want to kind of define the grass around here a little bit. I don't want to get too dark, but I am going to deepen a little bit. I've been going in and out of the medium, Carol, as uh, we go. Most um, There's still a lot left, but I am keeping my brush kind of just wet enough to move the paint around. It's, it is all pretty, um, pretty much on the thin side. There's definitely areas where the paint's a little heavier, more so in the highlights. But the uh, the whole base pretty much is built up rather thinly. Like Paul, may I ask? Besides um, sunsets, is there another aspect of landscape painting that you enjoy? I'm I'm obsessed with this uh, light dot. I. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing it since college. I did some portraits and things like that, but I would I was doing sort of large abstract works, but at my, a friend of mine summed it up real well and was like, these are really nice dark paintings with white spots in them. 
you know, and um, I, I still think I'm doing that. So uh -huh. are there other things? Sure. I love winter. I love moon. I love breezes. I love dead trees. I'm not a big fan of sunny days. They're nice to enjoy with my family, but um, painting them is a, a really palette change for me. So um, I'm going to probably be doing that this afternoon just to push myself. But um, yeah, uh, this is this is my happy place over here. Mm -hmm. Now, because we're doing, uh, because that sun's so intense, what I've been doing more now, or at least trying to do more now, is to add the color into the trees, especially where it's coming through the light. So over here where I, I shouldn't be a black line. I don't know if it's reading is black or if it's not or whatever, but I'm gonna take the orange and red and I'm gonna put it right on the uh, tree branch as a tree trunk. So now it's it's the same color as like what's sort of going on behind it. You can still separate it from uh, the sky, but we're gonna add this orangey yellow highlights on top of my trees, well, on the sides of my trees, because that light would be emanating and hitting things. We shouldn't just have dark black lines for trees. They have a width, they have a thickness. Light should hit them. Just breeze, just gives a little more something, you know. Now with the grasses over here again, I'm with the side of the brush, sort of a butt to the, like where the water meets the grass. You can push things up, push things down, push things up, push things down. This line's a little too big. I'm gonna take the back of my brush and I'm gonna just scrape it off. And I sort of just scratch it out and thin that line down a little bit. Paul, Marianne asks if you paint seascapes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love painting the ocean. Oh my gosh, if you never painted the ocean, go paint the ocean. I love standing on the rocks at the edge of the water and it's just like, do like king of the world. It's it's. It's a crazy feeling. Mm -hmm. We go up to Maine a few times every year and uh, yeah, oh man, it's awesome. Plus, I mean, you guys are right down by the coast over there too. It's just a little less rustic, I think, than the Maine coast, but. Yeah, it's a lot tamer. We don't have the rock ledges. Yeah, the it's, way Maine it's a little more does. serene, right? Yeah, we don't have the surf like that, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but oh yeah, no, that's true. I went to uh, Homer's studio. I didn't go to the studio, but um, we got dropped off around the property because you can't park on the property or whatever. You can at the museum, but yeah, running through the rocks that he painted and all that stuff. Oh man, I was like a little kid. It was, it was kind of mm -hmm. just art nerding right out. Love that mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> So at this point, um, I'm probably done for a demo. We, uh, I can keep going and tickling things, but I just don't know how beneficial that is to everybody. Um, so I'm gonna call it and say thank you for being here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them out. I'll be hanging out for a few minutes. Otherwise, thank you very much. Don't forget to go to my website and click on everything. Oh yeah, no, we won't sign off yet. Let's take a few. I see a question by Nancy Armstrong. Nancy, do you want to ask your question? Unmute yourself. 
Uh, I just wondered the the color Jean Brilliant. What brand of paint was that? Williamsburg. Thank you. That's all. That's it. Any other questions out there? Would love a demo of a seascape. Hmm. Sorry, tuned in on the wrong day. Next <laughs> time. Next time. Yeah, Marianne, keep that in mind. Maybe next year, <laughs> end of next year. We'd love to have you back, Paul. You weren't the least bit boring. Ah. No? No. It's hard to tell. It's such a quiet group. Uh, we were enthralled. That's why. Yeah. Appreciate it. It's very kind. It's stunning. Hey, Paul, that Paul, this is Marianne's husband, Bob. Hey, um, Bob. I started uh, oil painting. Uh, I've just completed my fourth painting. And my question is, uh, in the reference photo, there are light wispy clouds off to the left side of the trees. Is there a reason you didn't want to put those in? I forgot, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, yeah, totally. We should add a little more light as it um, yeah. emanates away from there. Yes, totally, Bob, you are right. I am wrong. <laughs> but no, yeah, I just didn't get to it. Thank you. We could do it things to work on they're never done bob they're never done no. <laughs> do you varnish them yes i do i use gambar i use the gloss gambar i don't use the matte one i've had some friends use the matte one and it hasn't worked out so hot but it will be a little shiny so but that's what i use i use the gloss gambar do you, like you wait before you do that Till it's dry to the touch. That's what Gamblin says. That's what it says on their video. That's what I do. So as long just as it feels one, pretty good, you're good to go. Just you one layer. Yep. Yeah. Do you ever layer. use retouch varnish? No, I'm not a big fan of it. it. What's nice about Gamvar too is that it comes off real easy. Yes. So if I do put it on and I decide I want to change the painting or I made a mistake or it's been out for two years and comes back and nobody likes it and I want to change it. A little bit of turp and a rag whoosh, comes right off. And what is it, Gambar? Gambar, yeah. V A R. G A M B A R. Yep. You know, like gam gambling does that with other stuff. It's gam sol, right? And it's just a solvent. And... Now I'm going to screw it up, Bob, and put those things in there. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, do you always use that particular medium? Yep. When I was learning how to paint, I was using liquid. Yeah. Um, I used that for a long time. I got kind of sick of it, just looked at other people's paintings and like the way theirs was looking and I wanted something more close to that. Tried all the traditional varnishes, mediums, all that other stuff. And then I found uh, Neil Miguel. I loved it, I stuck with it. And then I realized it was pretty much the same thing as liquid. And I was like, ah, I really didn't get that creative, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'll mm -hmm. Well, you definitely make it look easy, Paul. Mm -hmm. and oh. that's, a, that's a sign of a great teacher. Yeah. Um, definitely looks easy. Thanks, Hillary. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be a teacher. I was a little Espanol, anybody. But um, that <laughs> you really, you make it look effortless and you're just so loose. And relaxed. I've got so way more paintings point. behind me than Bob does. Yeah. Right. <laughs> About how many? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, normally, how long does it take you to do a finished painting? I mean, I know this was a demo painting, but. Yeah, but anywhere from an hour to a year. Yeah. Hours <laughs> to a year. <laughs> I've got tons of stuff behind me and in front of me that's not behaving well. Sometimes like it happens and it's great, you know, and it doesn't matter. That's fine. Sometimes I'm, I get lucky and I can bang out a big one real quick. Other times they just don't cooperate so well. And then sometimes I do like, I'll put down a pretty uh, nearly finished underpainting and then just come back to it maybe once or twice and just make some slight adjustments, adjustments you know. So for the most part, I like to have a painting for about you know, I would say about a week or two, if things are going well. 
mm-hmm. you know, paint it, let it dry a little bit, come back, maybe add a glaze, do a little adjusting, and then you're hopefully done. What size painting do you like to do the best? I, I do a ton of smaller works. Um, a, a lot of that's just because they move quicker because of the price point and things like that. Um, I also love working really big and I'll take the canvas and go outside so I can make an even bigger mess and stuff. Um, six feet is about where I sort of max out. I haven't had the nerve or need to make anything bigger than that, but I do enjoy really whipping stuff around every once in a while and freeing myself up. Nice, very nice. No. You just got to find a place to put the six foot painting. <laughs> Sell it. <laughs> all right any more plugs paul for yourself no. that you want to remind us about no i think that's it right huh? yeah i've talked enough about myself well it's all about you this morning <laughs> thanks <honey. laughs> not about us <laughs> all right great well we thank you so much and i'm serious about that you really do make it look easy um i wish i could produce something like that in this is an hour and a half and you've got I've seen your work you do very good don't say you can't yes you can oh, I've seen your well, stuff thank you. Ah, thank you still learning oils I'm kind of teaching myself I think I need a, I think I need a class <laughs> but anyway um it's really beautiful so thank you for sharing that with us remember everybody November 5th if you want to meet Paul in person he'll be at Susan Powell in Madison Mm -hmm. um along with some other artists and this painting i i want to go get a pumpkin latte and go for a walk in the woods that's what it is right (laughs) just just the fall it's screaming fall at us so it's great all right thank you very Um, much yes all right so everybody thank you very much for joining us today remember to check out the madison art society um website to find out all about our upcoming events, um, madisonartsocietyct.org. And thank you so much for joining us. Marianne, thank you for all you've done to get us going. Jen Thompson, um, our tech specialist in the background there, and Paul and everybody that made this possible. And Kim, thank you, Kim. Oh yes, the wife, we cannot forget. The helpful (laughs) spouse, very important. (laughs) <laughs> All right, everybody. Enjoy okay. the beautiful. Thank you again. Bye. Weather. We'll have Bye-bye. you back Thank again. You. Bye. 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 Bye.